Fandom Arcade. Ready? Start. Welcome back to Fandom Arcade. We are about to music this park. Welcome back to Fandom Arcade. Yep. In the interim, uh, we have been talking about awesome uh, tweets that we make over at Nihilus Joy. Uh, it is. Oh uh, yeah, follow us at Nihilus Joy. Yep. It's super fun. We make uh, comedy jokes out of uh, the darkest, most depressing reaches of the human psyche. So, you know. And fuck you, you for asking. You know it's good. So I really love this level. It's just so weird and whimsical. I know that's not normally your I bag. I hate whimsy. I know, Dan hates whimsy. But just like when you go over the xylophone, it xylophone sounds. Yeah, okay, I get I like that. that. Can you at least appreciate that? Uh, no, I appreciate that. Okay, what it is that I don't like about whimsy, and I've explained this to you before, but I'll mm -hmm. explain it again, is that I don't like the Willy Wonka logic of whimsy, which is an arrogant disregard of everything. Um, I would say it's not so much... And, 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 I, and I know, like, for quite some time, uh, you have been adamant about a distaste for whimsy specifically, but I would actually venture that it's not whimsy, but flippancy. Um, I, uh, I would actually say that oh. you would probably be pretty spot on there. Yeah, so it's, it's not whimsy uh, that you find distasteful, but the flippant nature that usually accommodate or associates so whimsy. when I think about things like um, pre-existing universes like um, oh Willy Wonka things like that uh -huh. when you have a universe where the um, where the boundaries and rules of the universe are described to protagonists like they're an idiot that bothers me where you have essentially yeah. a leader character saying it's like, well, the Kringles feed the Kronkles and the Kronkles then go to lunch. And then some, and then the child says, well, why don't just the Kringles feed the Kronkles? And then he looks at them like an idiot and say, but then who would feed the Kringles? Bah ha ha, whimsy. Um, and I, I mean, it makes perfect sense to me why you would find that distasteful because you are a writer, and it's that lazy. is lazy writing. Yeah, to me, it's lazy writing. Yeah. But when you have... Um, if you didn't like whimsy, if, if you couldn't appreciate whimsy to some degree, I seriously doubt we could have been remained friends for this long. Well, it's not just that. I wouldn't be able... I'm um, a cartoon, but made a person. I wouldn't be able to be the person that I am without appreciating whimsy to a certain degree. And also, yeah. one of my all-time favorite shows, Haven deals a great bit it's with true. whimsy but I felt like it's done in a way that isn't slapping the audience in the face and saying fuck you we do whatever we want yeah which is also kind of one of the reasons why I'm not a Whovian oh that's an argument there we go but I love Torchwood yeah well Torchwood is far more your jam than uh, than Doctor Who Oh, although you still haven't seen uh, you haven't seen Peter Capaldi. Peter Capaldi is. By uh, I'm excited about that. He is well, the and most also when I say I'm not a Whovian, I've told you before. I've told you many times. I yeah. give every Doctor a chance. Going, it's like, well, everything on paper says I should like this. I I think that uh, Peter Capaldi is the best possible chance. Chris Eccleston were... was a maybe. Uh -huh. David Tennant was. I was like, well, it's good. Not really my thing. Matt Smith was a oh for fuck's sake I can't deal with this yeah Matt Smith is the least your doctor a doctor can be uh, um oh so Kong race. on our Twitch says the fact that I can't remember the second Mission Impossible says how much I enjoyed it <laughs> Sun Wu you have no it was a John Wu doves fest it was terrible it was the most probable a mission could be well, and also, what one of oh, the things that makes Mission Impossible enjoyable and sets them apart from the Bond films is the fact that Ethan Hunt needs um, a team. By the way, Dan, yeah, we took the long route. I know. Don't take that one on the next lap. It it just takes too long. Ethan Hunt needs a team. He needs people to work with. Mm-hmm. And 
what's kind of interesting about that is that uh, it makes him vulnerable at times, which is where the comedy of the Mission Impossible series comes from. Yes. And was it Ghost Protocol that had the uh, big dramatic plane sequence? Uh, no, that's uh, Rogue Nation. That's Th five. That's the newest one. Okay. Yeah, have you seen it? No, no, no. I just saw the the trailer, yeah. and and in in the scene that I saw, it seemed very obvious that like the comedy arose from Simon Pegg like trying to get the door open and it wasn't working. Well, okay. So one of the things, and I can say this without spoilers, one of the things they do very well in Rogue Nation is a scene where Ethan actually drowns. Wow. It's, uh, it's been... And they bring him back to life with a defibrillator, and he's disoriented as all get for the next few minutes. Uh-huh. Because he died. That makes sense. So much to the point that when they go to steal a car, he does the, uh, the, the, the common Dukes of Hazard jump over the hood. Uh-huh. And bumbles it and falls flat on his face on the pavement. No, nice! And Simon Pegg, who plays Benji, asks him, Are you okay? You were dead a minute ago. <laughs> oh, man, I'm excited to see this movie. Like and I said, like the last one I saw was two, which left a terrible taste in my mouth. And you, you've never seen three? Nope. I recommend seeing three, four, and five. Well, I mean, dude, you got me sold on the uh, Fast and the Furious movies. Oh, R.I.P. Paul Walker. I miss him so much. I know we both do. That was one cool dude. He was a cool. He was a cool dude. I mean, seriously, spending so much of his uh, money and fortune just on being a good person. Yep. Um, but also, you remember when you and I saw Fast Seven in the theaters? We were both sobbing. It was so sad. And just the uh, the CG, this is like the manliest of bro tears. The the CG <clears throat> that they do at the end, where he, uh, where Vin Diesel literally pulls up at the uh, cross stop, and Paul yeah. Walker shows up and says, "Hey, you didn't think you were gonna leave without saying goodbye?" And they do a nice little bro race, and then oh. Vin Diesel pulls off and s gives a nice little spiel about well, that's why they were brothers. Yeah. Like I I fell apart mm -hmm. on Fast Seven. Dan. And I think part of that comes from the fact that Paul it was just such a good guy. Dan? Yeah. You're my Paul Walker. I'm gonna die? Uh but like tragically and everyone will miss you. I I finished second. Yeah. Uh Wolfzilla on our Twitch feed says, Did you ever get into the old Mission Impossible TV series? Yes, I actually watched a good deal of it. Um, and also, I, I see the question there, also says, if we ever played Mission Impossible for the N64, I have not played it on the N64, however... I remember it coming out on the N64. Well, even before that, there was a very old uh, Mission Impossible, like, DOS game. Are you serious? That I actually played all of, like, three minutes of and went, no, this doesn't make any sense. Oh, by the way, uh, take note that I noted the fact that I just bumped the mic. You're gonna hate me later, but I did it. <gasps> Um, but one of the things um, I Only remember for the spike on the audio. I remember uh, when N sixty four Mission Impossible came out. Yeah, yeah, um, and that's one of the things that I think is noteworthy about mm -hmm. Mission Impossible is that they tried to make a game around it, where they made uh, Ethan Hunt look like Gabriel Logan from Siphon Filter and everything. Mm -hmm. But the thing about Mission Impossible that has been consistent of all of the uh, movies, minus two, yeah. is that Ethan is headstrong. Yeah. He is capable of so much, but he needs a team. Which I think makes more sense. Uh, they really did try to, you know, have him go it alone for the most part in, in two. two. Yeah, it's like so many elements of two just completely fell apart. Yeah. Um... I'm, consu tires. I'm consuming planes. Give to me your trifle. Yeah, we'll continue. I'll continue planing. Um, but that's the thing is that <gasps> he's Dan. Yep. We're gonna have a rainbow road. Yep. We're gonna do this. Yep. But the uh, thing that made um, that'll that'll be uh, that'll be an episode from now, not this episode, but next episode. Uh, yeah. Um, what they did so well in Mission Impossible After 2 was they got back to the fact that Ethan is so headstrong, mm -hmm. um, but he needs a team. Yes. 
Oh, you were gonna. Oh, this le this level is so beautiful, dude. I'm like I said, I just unlocked these episodes. Like, I'm I think actually thinking when I get back this two weekend, nights before? Um, Mission Impossible Three. Let's Are you? It. You're always up for an Abrams joint, man, dude. Always, dude. I would absolutely love that. I'm always down to bro out, hang out, do some movies, have some snacks. I gotta yeah, go. This, I have to go carpend. Uh, I have to go cloud race. I get that. We're racing on clouds, Dan. Whoa. Clouds and We're beanstalks. We're living on a prayer. Mm-hmm. We're halfway there. And we get shot out of cannons, as we are wont to do. And then lightning happens, because Mario Kart is the best game. I love this game so much. Except when that happens. Oh, and you know also Fuck one of the best race. things about Ghost Protocol MI4? What's that? Is that it brings Jeremy Renner into the fold. Jeremy Renner. Hawkeye. Oh, yes! Awesome. He's a rad dude. He's kind of like the almost protege, right? No, no, no. Jeremy Renner is the guy who understands how the bureaucracy has to work. It's like, to keep things funded, we got to do this. Oh, so he's a bit more admin. Yeah. Okay, cool. Like the uh, the Martin Freeman character of uh, the newest Avengers movie. Yeah. Except, I'm assuming we like Jeremy Renner. <laughs> yeah. In, in actually both movies, now that I think about it. Yep. Which also, by the, the way... The irony was not lost on me. Jeremy Renner's best line came out of Avengers Age of Ultron when he actually drew his bow at Quicksilver and just said, no one would know. Mm-hmm. So good. Oh. Dude, I am blown away by the beauty of some of these courses. Oh, this is absolutely dope. Like I said, like this is the literal, you know, second time I've played it. So, I am uh, I'm very glad that I kind of get to enjoy this this new experience for you. Oh, because normally normally when I uh, when I pick up a Mario Kart game, I just solo the crap out of it until everything is just like second nature. The thing is that I've never purchased a Mario Kart game in my life. Mm hmm. When was the last one? What was the last one you would say like you? Played. Mario 64, uh, Mario Kart 64. You, you never double dashed? Nope. I I was not I was not a double dasher either. I actually have no idea what you're talking about when you say double oh. dash. Oh! So, uh, double dash was the, uh, the GameCube game. And it operated on the principle of two players playing the same cart, whether it was a CPU or, or, or otherwise. And that person would, I believe, be... It's been a while. It would be responsible for assisting with the drifting okay. and with the item management. Uh, yeah, I have no... No recollection of that. Yeah, it, it was more cooperative, but at the same point, like, I... I'm not a fan. Oh, um, next time on Phantom Arcade. So, check us out tomorrow. We're going to be playing some more things, including... Uh, the Mario Kart, uh, this version of Mario Kart's Rainbow Road. Bye!